morning brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Wednesday morning devotion. Thank you very much for having me. Our readings this morning are Baruch chapter 3 verses 24 to 27, Luke 12, 22 to 31. Our opening sentence is on page 34. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer your worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Divinity. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, 
Let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you will hear his voice today. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with, the, with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now we come before God's throne of grace, seeking his forgiveness, even for those things for which our hearts, our minds are afraid to face. Lord, we pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm is, psalm, is number 119, verses 97 to 120. Psalm 119. Oh, how I love your law. All day long it is in my mind. Your commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I'm wiser than the elders because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from evil ways that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your judgments because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and I am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tributes of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have divided heart, but your law do I love. You are my refuge and shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked, I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe, and my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You spawn all who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. 
In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread of you. I'm afraid of your judgments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Baruch, verse 3, beginning at chapter 24 and on to 37. O Israel, how great is the house of God, how vast the territory that he possesses. It is great and has no bounds. It is high and immeasurable. The giants who were born there, who were famous of old, great in stature and expert in war. God did not choose them or give them the way to knowledge. So they perished because, he had, because they had no wisdom. They perished through their folly. Who has gone up into heaven and taken her and brought her down from the clouds? Who has gone over the sea and found her and will buy her for pure gold? No one knows the way to her or is concerned about the path to her. But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all times. Fill it with four-footed creatures. The one who sends forth the light and it goes. He calls it and it obeys him trembling. The stars shone in their watch, watches and were glad. He called them and they said, here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge and gave her to his servant Jacob and to Israel whom he loved. Afterwards she appeared on earth and lived with humankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue in prayer with the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you sought our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for he will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We go to our second reading. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning in verse 22, and on to 31. Jesus continues. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you would eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. And how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? 
if then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? You have little faith. And do not keep striving for what you are to eat or what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, it gives me immense pleasure, and I thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts on the Gospel reading with you. I do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do not worry. It's a lesson on faith as opposed to anxiety. Now, fo following the parable of the rich fool, Jesus said to, this, to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about, what, about your body, what you will wear. Jesus knew that the greatest concern for most people is the acquisition of food and clothing and shelter. These have become the first and foremost objectives of our existence. See, generally, we have become obsessed with earning as much as we can to provide for these things, as we, the things we perceive to be the most important to our existence. But these are the very things which the Lord relegates. He makes it clear that there is more to life than food and more to the body than just clothing. Indeed, the emphasis of his teaching is a life of faith, believing in the providence of God. We must work earnestly and honestly for the supply of our current needs and for the foreseeable future, of course. But then we must trust in God to provide, to provide us to provide for us as we immerse ourselves in service to him. My friends, Christianity does not support laziness. We are told in 2 Thessalonians uh, 3 verse 10, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. But we should not allow the earning of wealth to consume our entire being for God will provide therefore the consideration for our provisions and our appearance must be held subordinate to the task of proclaiming his name the psalmist tells us in Psalm 37 verse 24, our steps are directed by the Lord. He strengthens those in whose way he delights. So we need not worry. Again, at 26 it says, I have been young and now I am old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children are begging bread. Why worry? This yet is one more reason why we should not worry. Now Jesus endorses this as he continued pointing out, pointing to common birds. They have no prop, they have no place of employment, they do not work or any means of saving. They have no bands to store up anything. 
yet God feeds them. He uses the raven as an example, depicting how God cares for his creatures. They are not engulfed in any frantic search for food or for their future needs, yet God feeds them. God, in his discourse with Job, asks him, who provides for the real raven? Who provides for the raven its prey? When the young one cry out to God, and Psalm 147 10 tells it, confirms this. It says, He provides food, food for flocks and herds and for the young raven when they cry. My friends, Jesus makes the comparison that if God so care about such seemingly insignificant creatures, how much more? will he not care for his people? He asks, of how much more value are you than the birds? Now this question of value, our value to God, must be explored a little because it is the basis on which Jesus tells us, do not worry. Our value to God could be looked at in three ways. Firstly, we are valuable to God because of who we are, the masterpiece of his creation, of his creation story. Genesis 1, says, so God created humankind in his own image. And as we go down to 28, God blessed them, gave them dominion over the earth to subdue it. So God, after he created everything and he created human beings. He gave them dominion over the earth to subdue it. We must have been, we must have, we must hold some value to God. Secondly, we are valuable to God because of the cost of, the cost to him in redeeming the world. Ephesians 1 5 says, he, des he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ. And this is confirmed also by John 3.16. And we know that only too well. God definitely loves us and we are valuable to him. Thirdly, we are valued because of what we can be. As Philippians 4.13 tells us and it affirms, for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So there can be no doubt, my friends, that we are valuable to God. Just as Christ intimated, we are of more value to our Creator than the birds to which He takes so much great care of. And then Jesus derives the folly of worrying about things over which we have no control. For we cannot extend our span of life for an hour by worrying about it. So what is the point of worrying if we, if we cannot change, we cannot make any change to the smallest issue in life by worrying about it? And there's no point being worrying about the rest. If we cannot make any change about the small issues in life, what is the point of worrying about the rest? Again, Jesus draws the comparison between human endeavor or efforts of their own to the glorious apparels of um, in, in, in bringing forward the glorious apparels of, Sa of Solomon. In spite of all the human endeavor to produce the garments of so Solomon, in spite of all the details and the attention put into the preparation, the wild lilies were even more beautiful. Imagine that. These are, these are cared for by God. The wild lilies cared for by God are brighter and, more, and of more splendor than the, than the garments of Solomon. So what are we to worry about? Jesus contends, if God creates such beautiful flowers which, are, which, are, which bloom one day and burnt on the morrow, will he not be mindful of the needs of his children? 
He then rebuked the gathering for their lack of faith. He rebuked them for their, for their persistence in worrying and having little faith in God to provide for them. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is only through faith in God and in the powers of His Son to save that we can avoid worrying. The fact is, we are forever in the presence of God. If He cares so much about the birds of the air and the wild flowers of the field, will He not care much more for those He created to serve Him? Would He value, would He not value those for whom His only Son gave His precious blood and secret life? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the providence of God, that is, the protection and care of God, is forever with us. It is forever with the faithful. Psalm 39 reminds us of this. At verse 6 it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I, make my, if I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the winds of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If we believe in these words, there can be no cause, there can really be no cause to worry. So we are therefore to take the advice that Jesus gave the gathering. We should not expend all our efforts over food and to keep worrying for such is the nature of the world and God is aware of all our needs but we must pursue instead a life in the kingdom of God and all things will be given to us. We cannot spend our lives worrying, pursuing our physical needs and neglecting, seeking after the kingdom of God. How sad it will be for us when at the end of our days, we should come to the realization that we spend we spent our life worrying about things that we, that will, which will be of no consequence to us in the end. My friends, in ending, may I commend to you this prayer of protection by James Billet Freeman. Let us just be still and allow this prayer to saturate our being. May the light of God surround me, the love of God enfold me, the power of God protect me, the presence of God watch over me. Where we are, God is. I trust that having said this prayer with certainty and confidence, you would have experienced the relief that I have felt in saying this prayer. Do not worry. The Lord be with you.
joy Lift your hands in sweet surrender to His name Oh, give Him all your tears of sadness Give Him all your years of pain And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name now confess our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. By way of, by way of intercession, we continue to pray and ease in this situation with this virus. We see, even with the introduction of the, the vaccine, there's no, there's just a little ease in the deaths in some parts of the world. We ask God to put his hand and into this situation and help, help us as we strive to get over the, this pandemic. To bring an end to this, the death and the suffering. But in all things, we give God thanks. We give him thanks for the lessons that we learn in this pandemic, the opportunity to help someone else, particularly strangers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our country also, we continue to pray as we fight on in the hope that the population would listen and heed the advice of those in authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Anglican Church worldwide, for the well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
the Most Reverend Justin Welby. We pray for our Provincial Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, for the Assistant Bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley, and for the retired bishops, the Right Reverends, Calvin, Roland Clive. We pray that God will continue to bless them, that they will be good shepherds to his, to his people. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray today for St. Augustine Lebray, for the Reverend Father Wayne Moon, for the Reverend, sorry, for the Reverend Wayne Moon, and for Reverend Donald Gopal. We pray for the Faisabad Anglican Secondary School. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish, we continue to pray for Reverend Father Professor Anderson Maxwell, for his assistant, Reverend Father Titus Akbarali, for the deacons, Reverend Finley, Reverend Fanfair, and Reverend Pontiflick Andre. We pray also for the laity. Remembering also our former rector, Canon Jemmet Hazelwood. We pray for God's blessing on them, that his provision will continue to attend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before our Father the five congregations in our parish at, at Oropoon, St. Philip's, the Church of the Transfiguration, that's St. Aidan's, St. Aidan's, and St. Mary's Takarigo. Remembering also those who are sick, especially now at this time, remembering all our brothers and sisters who simply cannot be with us. But we pray that we make good use of this time to draw closer to God, even in our distancing, distance, we hope that we use the time to go closer to the church in, in service to our Lord, in service to God. We pray that we, we go closer to the church by seeking his forgiveness, seeking his mercy, and for the opportunity to assist someone at this time. We continue to pray, never forgetting our citizens, our brothers and sisters abroad, in the hope that they will return to us soon and that they'll be well wherever they are. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We pray and we remember those who have passed in the hope that God will grant them his rest. Lord, in your mercy, please hear our prayer. We continue with suffrage C on page 44 of your Book of Common Prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, O Lord, is our hope, and we shall not hope in vain. Our colic is for the sixth Sunday of Easter, found on page 170 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you, such good things as surpass our understanding. Point to our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promise, which exceeds all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you 
and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer with the collect for rogation days, number 19, number 19, 3, for stewardship of creation. This is on page 202. O merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must on one day give, may we faithful, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ our Lord, which you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the collect for rogation days. This is number 19, part 3 on page 203. We pray together for stewardship of creation. O merciful Creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gift to Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us this close, strengthen us to remember that whenever good works we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and in it, may gladly perform it to the honor and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, my brothers and sisters, our service has come to an end. I trust that, I trust that the word of God would have would be edifying to you in spite of what we are going through that we understand that there's no point in worrying let us go now in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ Amen